Say this with me. By his stripes, I am healed. Say it again. By his stripes, I am healed. One more time. By his stripes, I am healed. Now, I want to read the scripture in John chapter 8. In John chapter 8, verse 31, it says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Say, by his stripes, I am healed. This morning, I want to talk to you about having a healing mindset. Having a healing mindset. Now, a mindset is something very, very powerful. A mindset is a mental attitude or an inclination. It's a, 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 a fixed state of mind, a way of thinking, a person's attitude, attitude about something. Amen? Let me say that again. A mindset is a mental attitude or inclination, a fixed state of mind, a way of thinking, a person's attitude about something. I want you to have a healing mindset where your mind is established. It's rooted. It is, it's unmovable when it comes to healing. Healing is everything, everything you are about is healing. All that you think is healing. You never think death. You never think sickness. You never think disease. You just think healing. It just, it's all, if, if you were to cough, you won't be thinking, oh, I'm getting sick. You'd be seeing, saying, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. I have a healing mindset. I am, it, it, it's, it's my mind. I, I, I don't think any other way other than healing. Amen. And so that's what I want to talk to you about is having a fixed mindset regarding healing. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, I buy it by his stripes. I am healed. A healing mindset is a mental attitude that gives and receives healing. A healing mindset is a mental attitude that gives and receives healing. It starts with a mindset that's built up on truths. What did Jesus say? And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And so once you know the truth of the word of God, it has to build up a mindset in you that everything else is a lie. What you see is not the real, is not real. What you believe is truth. Amen? If, we, if you can, go to Isaiah 53. Hallelujah. Isaiah 53, beginning verse 1, it says, Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. So they're talking about Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ, he was, he was nothing that you would see as someone that was different, but he went through these sorrows and he was acquainted with grief. And we thought that he was going through all that because he was being punished for his sins. That's the way the whole world saw Jesus at that time. So they're talking about what Jesus, who Jesus was and what he did for us, Amen. Verse 3 says, he was despised and rejected by man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Verse 4, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we 
are healed. Some people think they say, I, I, can't, I can't come to God because I've been very bad. I can't expect God to, to help me because I've done so negative. I feel so dirty. I feel so unworthy. How can God love someone like me who's been a part of so many negative things? I grew up not just in sin. I was someone that caused other people to sin. I've hurt people. I've done some things that I am so ashamed of. I'm afraid of coming into the light because I don't want nobody to know who I really am. And, 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 and people are seeing themselves under this this. this curse of sin that they can never look at themselves as someone that God loved and he loved them so much that he sent Jesus Christ to deliver them from that life of sin, to deliver them from the guilt and the shame of sin and to deliver them from the payment of sin, which is death. The chastisement of, it, of our peace was upon him. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. In other words, Jesus did it all for you. He didn't do it for you because you deserved it. He did it for you because he loved you. I should have been the one on the cross. I should have been the one that, would, that, had, that had been killed for my sins. But he who knew no sins took my place. And not just my place, but the place of all humanity. He paid the price for my sins. My mental struggles of guilt and shame. My mental struggles of, of anxiety and fear. He took it all upon him. He was bruised. He was stricken, stricken. He took it all at the cross of Calvary. Amen. Whether you like it or not, whether you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it does not matter. He paid it anyway. He paid it completely for you. It's already done. He paid the, the blood of Jesus, the perfect blood of Jesus, the son of the living God. His sacrifice at the cross was greater than all the sins of humanity multiplied by millions upon millions. His blood is more precious than all the pain and the hurt and the suffering and the sins of humanity. You cannot be too bad that God has not already forgiven you through his blood. The Bible says the, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So he paid it all for you at the cross of Calvary. Amen. Whether you receive the gift or not, you still have to open up your heart and, open, and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You still have to open up your heart and receive Jesus as your healer, as your deliverer, as your Savior. He paid, paid it all for you. The Bible says that he died on the cross, buried in the grave. Three days later, he rose from the dead. And when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you rose from the dead with him. That's why water baptism is so powerful, because you're declaring, I died with Christ at the cross. I was buried in the grave with Christ. But when I rose up out of that water, it's because Jesus rose up from, from the grave. The life I live is not far my own. The life I live is unto the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm a new creation. I'm born again. The old person who was broken and sick and, and was full of guilt and shame, the, the old person that couldn't be trusted, the old person that, 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 that surrendered their, their, their soul to, to, to the, the ways of, of hell, that person is dead. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. No more guilt, no more shame, no more sickness, no more disease, no more fear. I am new creation in Christ Jesus. This body doesn't belong to the devil. It belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. This heart does not belong to the devil. It's bought with the price, the blood of Jesus Christ. I belong to Christ. 
So the curse of sin and death is no longer upon my life. Matter of fact, the scripture says this, as he is, so are we now. Amen. Amen. Is Jesus sick? So you are not sick either. You're healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so your mindset has to be, by his stripes, I am healed. That statement was not healing in the future. That statement is healing at the cross of Calvary. When he was whipped on his way to the cross, that was the payment for the, for the sicknesses of mankind. Amen? Just because, just because uh, you're sick doesn't mean that you have to deal with sickness as a permanent condition. Healing is your permanent condition. Say, by his stripes. I am healed. Again, by his stripes, I am healed. And so that's the truth. That's the truth, amen? And that has to become your mindset. By his stripes, I am healed. That Jesus is is my healer. He has already healed me. He paid the price for my sickness, amen? Healing becomes your mind, your mindset, it becomes your mental attitude, and, and, and it allows you not just to, to receive healing, but to give healing. I, w- I go to a place, and someone starts talking about, oh, man, m- my back hurts. What's your name? Can I pray for you? They look at me like, what? I was just complaining about my back. I know, but... My Bible says the believer will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And I'm a believer and I have hands. I'm equipped for this thing. Can I pray for you? And they look at me and, and sometimes they say no, but most of the time they say yes. And I just put my hand upon them in Jesus' name. And then I said, how do you feel? And they're thinking, this guy just put his hand upon me. It's crazy. Jesus freak, you know. I know what they're thinking. I know what you think. I know. I know. Yeah. See, me and Ruben know. We know. We know. But I'm doing the word of God. I'm following the word of God because the word of God says, believe it will lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. This person's complaining about sickness. I put my hand up on him. How do you feel? He said, well, wait. What? What? It's not that. What? What? I love it. There's times, I, you know, I'll pray for the sick everywhere. I love it when I start praying for the sick and, you know, I'm in places where, where, where you know, people, they like to cuss and I start praying for them and they start cussing away. What the? What the? <laughs> I go, to, I go to Australia and I preach at, at Mike Barry's church. It's full of a bunch of, 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 of people being set free from drug addiction. And we start praying for their healing. They start, they get healed and they're walking around. How the blankety blank, thank blank. I love it. That's, you know it's true. You know it's pure. <laughs> They'll start cursing. You see them, what the? And they go, oh, I'm sorry, Perry Preacher. I'm sorry, Preacher. But the, it's hilarious. I love it. You know, this is God. And so I have a healing mindset that the healing, healing power of Jesus Christ is not just for me. It's for me to give to others that they can receive because that person that gets healed, now they know that Jesus is real, he's alive, and they surrender their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Say, I have a healing mindset. That's your attitude, your, your mental attitude to give and to receive healing. Let me just share, uh, let's see if I have any time. I don't have a lot of time. Go to Matthew chapter 13. I would tell you a bunch of testimonies, but I'm running out of time, and I want to pray for my brothers that are watching, my sisters that are watching on TV. We've got a church that needs, that needs to receive from God today, amen? In Matthew chapter 13, it says, in verse 57, so they were offended at him, but Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country, in his own house. Now he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Now go to Matthew chapter 14. 
Verse 34, when they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent out into all the surrounding region, brought him all who were sick, and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched it were made perfectly well. In Nazareth, they didn't believe. In Nazareth, they didn't have a healing mindset. In Nazareth, they saw Jesus as just a man. But in Gennesaret, just on the other side of, the, of that sea, they, they, they had a strong healing mindset. They went and they gathered all the sick just so that they could touch Jesus' clothes. And as many as touched his clothes, they were all healed. The healing mindset makes all the difference. In our mind, we have to cross over. We can't stay in unbelief. You can't afford to not believe. You have to believe. If you do not believe, nothing changes. But if you believe, everything changes. We need to build a strong healing mindset where it's unmovable. That's the way your attitude is every single time sickness tries to rise up. And the way you build it, you build it upon the word, the highest authority, the truth. Say, by his stripes, I am healed. By his stripes, I am healed. Now, I want to I just give you a little bit understanding about your brain. Amen? Your brain is wired for positivity. Your brain is wired for positivity. Your brain has to learn fear. But the natural order of your brain is to think positive. Amen? You learn fear, but the natural order of your brain is to think positive. Amen? And if your brain is always thinking negative, you can retrain your brain. You can retrain your brain where it begins to reject negativity and accepts only positivity. Amen? What you think the most about is what will grow. What you think the most about is what will grow. If you think defeat, you're defeated. If you think defeat, you think that you're not going to, if you're taking a test and you think you're going to fail, you're going to fail. You're headed in that direction. You are building up the reality that you're getting ready to possess. But if you will change your mind and begin to think that you shall succeed, you begin to grab hold of the scriptures that reinforce the thoughts of, 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 of victory. You begin to declare, by the stripes, Jesus, I am healed when you face any pain in your body. Or you begin to declare, I have the mind of Christ when you think that when you're facing some confusion that it seems like you can't understand. When you begin to grab a hold of the word of God and begin to use it for your mindset to think in the direction that you want to go in, you are creating your future. Instead of looking at your money and say, I'm poor, you should look at the blessings of the Lord and say, I'm blessed. But pastor, I don't even have enough to put food on my table. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. A new mindset. God's going to supply. Look at your neighbor and say, God's going to supply. Your mindset gets focused on what you are believing God for. Amen. Hallelujah. And so you have to retrain your mind to think positive. If you start a business thinking that your business is going to fail, it's going to fail. If you start a marriage thinking that your marriage is going to fail, it's going to fail. When it comes to thinking about a business, you should be thinking not just, a building, not just building one business, but you're going to expand greatly and build many businesses. When it comes to your marriage, you should be thinking, man, I'm going to get old with this woman. We're going to have many kids and many grandkids, and we're going to be blessed. Amen. Amen. And all the husbands say amen. amen. Let me try that again. And all the husbands say amen. amen. You could do better than that. And all the husbands say amen. amen. That's a lot better. <laughs> man. You guys really don't want to have a good Father's Day, do you? <laughs> you really don't want to have a good Father's Day. <laughs> what you think the most about is what will grow, and like seeds, you plant your thoughts. 
You have to plant your thoughts. If you find yourself thinking in a negative direction, you have to grab a hold of that thought, reject it, and replace it with a better thought. Amen? Hallelujah. How many ladies like to cook? How many men like to cook? If you go into that kitchen and think, I can't cook, you're not going to cook. But you jump in there and you start cooking, even if it comes about bad, you say, oh, I just learned how not to do it. I'm a lot better than I was yesterday, amen? So you replace the thought with a, with a new thought, like seeds. You replace, you, you sow the seed that you want to grow. And whatever you think on the most is what's going to be established in your life, amen? Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, the word of God is so awesome. It's so awesome. Amen. One last scripture, James chapter 5, verse 14. It, said, it says, is anyone among you sick? Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. In that one scripture, just acting upon the word of God, having an elder pray the prayer of faith over him, anointing you with oil. You have healing. You have salvation from your sins. Amen. It says that you will recover. Amen. That's a mindset. You should be thinking if, if, if sickness ever comes upon your body, you should be thinking, man, I'm going to go get the elders to pray for me. I'm going to get the pastors to pray for me. I'm going to ask them to anoint me with oil. I'm going to go. Why? Because my, the word of God says that if I get them to pray the prayer of faith over me, anointing me with oil, I will be made whole. And so my faith is in the word. So my mindset, I'm coming to the house of God to receive my healing that's promised to me in the word. You can't keep me home. I'm, I'm showing up to church so that I can get my miracle. Amen. 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 Some people, well, what if it doesn't work? Wrong mindset. Right. Come on. That's right. Wrong mindset. Right. Your, you, 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 your faith is not solid. You ask amiss. The Bible says, don't even expect to receive anything. You're not, you're not hoping you be healed. You are healed in the name of Jesus. And that pain or that situation, that, that, that feeling that you feel in your body or, or in, in your relation, whatever it is, it's only a temporary situation. But healing is a permanent condition. Healing is a permanent condition. I wish I could tell about 30 more stories, but I'll share one last story. This one man showed up to church. I never met him before, but he was watching TV, the TV program. And he came to service, and as I was walking to the, to the front, he stopped me and said, I came to church because today I'm receiving my complete healing in Jesus' name. I looked at him, I said, praise the Lord. As you have spoken, it will be done. It was a healing Sunday. I opened up the altar for anyone that needs prayer for sickness. He came up. The man came up with a, a cane, barely able to walk. I laid my hands upon him. I prayed the prayer of faith over him. The power of God hit his body. He fell out under the spirit of God. I went and prayed for everybody else. The Holy Spirit touched them too. When I, when I look back at the man, the man jumps up on his feet. He throws a cane on the, on the stage and he says, I don't need that no more and walks out of the church. Completely set free, completely healed. <laughs> Amen. He came ready for his miracle. How many of y'all are ready for your miracle? How many of y'all are ready to see whatever pain is in your body go in the name of Jesus? How many of y'all are ready to see whatever has been trying to attack your mind to go in the name of Jesus? Jesus is a healer. He'll heal your mind. He'll heal your heart. He'll heal your finances. He'll heal your body. He heals. He came to set the captives free. Amen. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Do you believe that today? Amen. Praise the Lord. Say, by his stripes, by his stripes. 
I am healed. By his stripes, I am healed. By his stripes, I am healed. 